There have been 46 presidents of the United States, including the current president, Joe Biden, who took office in 2021. Grover Cleveland is considered the 22nd and 24th president since he was elected for two non-consecutive terms. While some leaders are praised for their forward-thinking decisions and revolutionary leadership, others have faced criticism and condemnation for their actions. According to political scientist Walter Dean Burnham, the complex profiles of presidents can make it difficult to categorize them. Historian Alan Brinkley notes that some presidents can be seen as both failures and great or near-great leaders. For example, Nixon was seen as brilliant but morally lacking, making his evaluation challenging. Additionally, the overall impact of absolute rankings is unclear, especially for the average president. Join us as we will examine the government of the top 12 worst presidents in American history, focusing on the choices and actions that earned them this. Number 12, Richard Nixon, 1969 to 1974 Richard Nixon's presidency is primarily defined by the Watergate scandal, which led to his resignation from office. Nixon, a Republican from California, was elected in 1968 and re-elected in 1972. The Watergate scandal began in 1972 when five men were arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate complex in Washington, D.C. It was later revealed that the break-in was part of a larger effort to gather intelligence and engage in illegal activities to benefit Nixon's re-election campaign. The subsequent cover-up by members of Nixon's administration, along with the existence of secret White House tapes, faced intense scrutiny. In 1974, facing impeachment by the House of Representatives, Nixon became the first U.S. president to resign from office. The Watergate scandal eroded public trust in the presidency and the government as a whole. Nixon's involvement in the cover-up and abuse of power resulted in widespread criticism and a lasting legacy of distrust in political leadership. Number 11, George W. Bush, 2001 to 2009 George W. Bush's presidency received significant criticism, particularly for his handling of the Iraq War and the response to Hurricane Katrina. Bush, a Republican from Texas, took office in 2001 after a controversial election. One of the major events during his presidency was the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001, which led to a shift in U.S. foreign policy and the invasion of Afghanistan to remove the Taliban regime. However, it was Bush's decision to invade Iraq in 2003 that drew significant criticism. The justification for the war was based on faulty intelligence regarding weapons of mass destruction, which were never found. Critics argue that the invasion was a misguided and unnecessary military intervention that resulted in prolonged conflicts, loss of American lives, and destabilization of the region. Another major criticism of Bush's presidency was his handling of Hurricane Katrina in 2005. The hurricane struck the Gulf Coast, causing widespread destruction and loss of life. The response from the federal government, particularly the Federal Emergency Management Agency FEMA, was widely criticized as slow and inadequate. The delayed and disorganized response exposed significant failures in disaster preparedness and response. Bush's presidency was also marked by controversies over policies related to counterterrorism, including the use of enhanced interrogation techniques such as waterboarding, which many considered as torture. Overall, Bush's presidency was marred by the Iraq War, the response to Hurricane Katrina, and controversies surrounding his national security policies. Critics argued that his decisions and policies had long-lasting negative consequences both domestically and internationally. Number 10. Zachary Taylor, 1849-1850 Zachary Taylor, born on November 24, 1784, and passing away on July 9, 1850, served as the 12th President of the United States from July 9, 1849, to March 4, 1850. Millard Fillmore was his Vice President. Taylor, a war hero, is often forgotten as a president since he had little political experience. He was known more as a failure. Taylor was not politically savvy and is considered one of the least politically astute presidents in American history. He was a respected military leader who participated in significant battles during the War of 1812 and the Mexican War. Born in Virginia and raised in Kentucky, he often dressed like a farmer instead of wearing his military uniform. Other generals would mock his lack of education and refinement, but he possessed calm judgment that helped him succeed against the odds in many battles. When the Whig Party chose him as their candidate in 1848, 
they saw potential in his military background. He was a slave owner who supported slavery in the South but was opposed to secession and expansion into other states. Some believe that the Civil War might have started due to his resistance to the Compromise of 1850, which undermined the Missouri Compromise. If it had come to war, Taylor would have fought against the potential secessionists. However, he passed away barely a year after taking office. Number 9. Herbert Hoover Herbert Hoover, born on August 10, 1875, and died on October 28, 1964, served as the 31st President of the United States from March 4, 1929, to March 4, 1933. His vice president was Charles Curtis. Hoover was a poor communicator who worsened the Great Depression by sparking trade conflicts. He was a political novice and an ineffective president. Hoover, elected just before the Great Depression hit, was known for his management skills and technical expertise. He had previously overseen relief efforts in Europe after World War I and served as Commerce Secretary under Harding and Coolidge. When the Great Depression began, he implemented tax cuts and public works initiatives to boost employment, but he adamantly refused to provide unconditional aid. However, his biggest problem may have been his inability to effectively communicate and came across as cruel and indifferent. Number 8. John Tyler John Tyler, born on March 29, 1790, and died on January 18, 1862, served as the 10th President of the United States from April 4, 1841, to March 4, 1845. He did not have a vice president. He was a strong supporter of slavery who deviated from his party's agenda after assuming the presidency. Tyler became president after William Harrison's death just 32 days into office. Tyler began his political career as a Jeffersonian Republican, opposing the Federalists' plans for high tariffs and government-sponsored internal improvements. He came from a wealthy plantation owner background and initially supported President Andrew Jackson's campaign against nullification while serving as a U.S. Senator. However, he soon fell out with Jackson when he blocked South Carolina's attempt to overturn a small tariff. As president, Tyler rejected the establishment of a national bank and other policies advocated by his party. He was criticized by fellow Whigs for reviving condemned practices from the days of President Jackson. Tyler had to withstand an impeachment effort after the entire Harrison-appointed government resigned. His main achievement was establishing the rule that a vice president who ascends to the presidency has the same authority as an elected president which was significant considering how disliked he was by the majority of his own party. Number 7. Millard Fillmore Millard Fillmore, born on January 7, 1800, and died on March 8, 1874, served as the 13th President of the United States from July 9, 1850, to March 4, 1853. He had no vice president. He supported the Compromise of 1850, which prolonged Southern separation and promoted the expansion of slavery. Fillmore, who was from upstate New York and began his career as a teacher, transitioned to politics in the Whig Party. Vice President Zachary Taylor, a popular military hero, passed away in office just over a year after taking office, making Fillmore his successor. Fillmore was generally overlooked until he declared his support for the Compromise of 1850 in the event of a deadlock in the Senate. This compromise included the Fugitive Slave Law, which required the federal government to return escaped slaves to their owners. After Taylor's death, Fillmore worked even harder to pass the compromise proposals. While Fillmore's initiatives may have temporarily averted a national crisis and delayed the start of the Civil War, peace came at an unacceptable cost. Twenty years later, the New York Times stated that Fillmore saw slavery as a political, not moral, issue. In hindsight, it might be too generous to call this a mere misfortune. Number 6. Warren G. Harding, born on November 2, 1865, and died on August 2, 1923, served as the 29th President of the United States from March 4, 1921, until his death on August 2, 1923. His vice president was Calvin Coolidge. Warren G. Harding, known for his scandals and wrongdoing, was an avid golfer and poker player during his presidency. He is often remembered for the numerous scandals that occurred during his time in office. In his own words, Harding admitted that he was not fit for the presidency and should never have held the position. He was notorious for his womanizing, friendliness, and constant desire to please others.
Before becoming president, Harding worked as a newspaper man and publisher and held various elected positions in Ohio. His father once remarked that it was fortunate Harding wasn't a woman, as he would constantly be pregnant, highlighting his reputation as a womanizer. Harding was chosen as a last-minute candidate for the Republican Party's nomination for president in a smoke-filled room incident. During his campaign, he remained deliberately vague on important issues, such as the United States membership and the League of Nations. Once in the White House, Harding focused on golf, poker, and his mistress, while his appointed friends engaged in corrupt practices within the government. His Secretary of the Interior granted access to federal oil deposits, including the infamous Teapot Dome in Wyoming, to oilmen in exchange for illicit payments. Harding once famously remarked that he had no trouble with his enemies, but it was his companions who kept him awake at night. Harding passed away while in office, most likely due to a stroke, with stress being a contributing factor. Over 10 years later, his former attorney general referred to him as a forgotten president, comparing him unfavorably to Abraham Lincoln. However, he also predicted that Harding's reputation would improve with time, although that moment is still far off. Number 5. William Henry Harrison, born on February 9, 1773, and died on April 4, 1841, served as the ninth president of the United States from March 4 to April 1841. John Tyler was his vice president. Harrison's presidency was the shortest in American history, lasting only 30 days, as he developed pneumonia shortly after delivering the nation's longest inaugural address. However, it is widely acknowledged that Harrison's presidency had little impact, and he is often considered one of the least consequential presidents in academic scholarship. His most notable accomplishment was his victory over the Shawnees at the Battle of Tippecanoe in 1811. Number 4, Franklin Pierce. Franklin Pierce, born on November 23, 1804, and died on October 8, 1869, served as the 14th President of the United States from March 4, 1853, to March 4, 1857. His Vice President was William R. King. Pierce's strong support for the expansion of the United States borders, particularly with the addition of slave states, contributed to the tensions that led to the American Civil War. Pierce, a Democrat from New Hampshire, was often referred to by his opponents as Doface, meaning a northerner with southern principles. He is often categorized among the hesitant pre-Civil War compromisers. Pierce fervently supported national expansion, even if it meant creating new slave states. He actively backed the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854, which, along with the Compromise of 1850, effectively nullified the Missouri Compromise of 1820. Pierce even suggested using force, if necessary, to annex Cuba, although this idea was ultimately abandoned due to opposition. Number 3, Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson, born on December 29, 1808, and died on July 31, 1875, served as the 17th President of the United States from March 4, 1865, to April 15, 1869. After rejecting Reconstruction policies, such as the 14th Amendment, Johnson faced an impeachment trial, although he managed to avoid conviction. Johnson's reputation has diminished over time, primarily due to scholarly reassessments of post-Civil War Reconstruction. He is now criticized for opposing Republican policies aimed at protecting the rights and welfare of newly emancipated African Americans. Historian Woodrow Wilson played a role in shaping negative perceptions of Reconstruction, portraying it as a vengeful program that harmed repentant Southerners while benefiting opportunistic Northerners, known as carpetbaggers, and opportunistic white Southerners, known as scalawags, who formed alliances with blacks for political gain. Johnson, originally from North Carolina, worked as a tailor before moving to Tennessee and entering politics as a Democrat. Despite winning various prestigious positions, including U.S. Senator, Johnson's presidency was marked by bitter power struggles with radical Republicans in Congress. Congress sought to limit his powers, leading to his impeachment, which narrowly failed. While Johnson did turn a blind eye to Southern attempts to undo the effects of the Civil War, his resistance to Reconstruction policies and disregard for the rights of newly freed African Americans resulted in his poor historical reputation. He also opposed the 14th Amendment, repealed the first Civil Rights Act, and dismantled the Freedmen's Bureau. Number 2, Donald Trump. 
Donald Trump, born on June 14, 1946, served as the 45th President of the United States from January 20, 2017, to January 20, 2021. His vice president was Mike Pence. Trump is the only president to have been impeached twice and is widely regarded as one of the 10 worst presidents in history. According to a C-SPAN presidential leadership poll, he ranks fourth from the bottom among the 44 past presidents. The survey rates former presidents based on 10 leadership traits, including public appeal, crisis leadership, economic management, moral authority, relationships with Congress, administrative prowess, vision and agenda setting, pursuing equal justice for all, and performance in light of the times. Number 1, James Buchanan. James Buchanan, born on April 23, 1791, and died on June 1, 1868, served as the 15th President of the United States from 1857 to 1861. His vice president was John C. Breckinridge. Buchanan's presidency is heavily criticized because he failed to take a stand against the expansion of slavery, which ultimately contributed to the formation of the Confederacy. Buchanan, a bachelor and a Democrat from Pennsylvania, acknowledged slavery as an unjustifiable evil but did not challenge the legally recognized system. Even before his presidency, he supported agreements that allowed slavery to expand in the Western territories, including through the Louisiana Purchase and the Mexican-American War. The Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854, in particular, undermined efforts to prevent the expansion of slavery by allowing settlers to decide whether to permit slavery in their proposed state constitutions. However, Buchanan's reputation suffered the most due to his weak response to the secessionist movement and his failure to confront states that openly declared their intention to leave the Union after Abraham Lincoln's election. Buchanan argued that the Constitution did not grant him the authority to take action against secessionists, so he chose not to intervene as the situation worsened. This indecisiveness and inaction during a critical time further damaged his standing as president. We have reached the end of this video. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos to spread awareness about the experiences of black individuals and allow them to share their own perspectives. Thank you for watching.